Hello everybody, uh, it's good to be back. Today we're going to be discussing uh, a common source stage with the current source load. Uh, we discussed something similar a few days back um, in the video called Current Source Amplifier's Story About Gain, I believe, um, where we discussed how would it be if we included a current source in the load uh, as the load for a current source amplifier. Uh, well, the reason we said that was because current source, current sources have infinite resistance, and we know that the gain equation is G M times R D. So the drain resistance or the load resistance, if it is put to infinity, we said we'll get a lot of gain. But then we saw in that lecture that if you put an ideal current source, the MOSFET. Uh, the only gain that this amplifier can give you is equivalent to minus GM times R naught, where R naught or RO, RO is a channel resistance of this MOSFET. So, um, putting this idea into a more practical implica uh, implementation, uh, we're going to look at a few circuits today. So, before I do that, um, let me first write this down. Our typical. Uh, common source amplifier. Um, so what was the gain of this going to be equal to? Minus GM times RD. Now, GM is the transconductance of the input transistor. But what about RD? What is RD exactly here? What it is, it's the impedance seen at the output node. Okay, the impedance seen at the output node here. Always remember, so the transconductance of the input transistor or input device times the impedance seen at the output node is the gain. But here, there is RD alright, but there's also a channel resistance of this old MOSFET, of this MOSFET itself, right? We're not considering that. Why is it so? If you consider RO, it's going to be like this, right? RD, and the node, and then you have a V out here and then R O. So in in effect these two resistances are parallel, right? It's they're separated by a node. So the equivalent resistance as seen at the output node is gonna be R O parallel to R D, which is R O R D over R O plus R D, right? But there's a catch here. RO, the channel resistance, is super huge compared to RD, right? If it is super huge, we can neglect RD at the denominator. It's not going to matter much. So it's going to be RO, RD over RO, which again, RO, RO cancel, so it's RD. So by a very um, sensible approximation, we ignore this, the channel resistance of this device here, okay? And just write RD. So just remember that. Now, based on this, today's discussion is going to have a transistor itself, a MOSFET itself, as the load device, uh, a bias voltage there, and an input voltage here, and V out. So again, this is the input uh, transistor, and yeah, this is the load transistor, right? So, now, we're going to bias this transistor in the saturation region. Why the saturation region? In the saturation region, the MOSFET behaves as a current source in parallel with the resistance. It's not an ideal current source, but it, uh, a current source is present, which shows us that it'll, it's going to give us a great gain because of high resistance, right? Now, at this output node, right at this output node, what is the resistance? Again, we have to write the gain of this transist, this system. Right, it will definitely. This is, this is M1 and M2, so definitely the input transistors tran, uh, transconductance will be considered. Uh oh, uh, hold on, let me get some more space here. Okay, and uh, times the impedance seen at the output node. Now there is a channel resistance R01 here, and there's channel resistance R02 here. Right, like before, we cannot ignore R0 because the both of them are large numbers, right? In, in As a thumb rule, when you have parallel resistances, the largest one is neglected because it can be ignored from the 
like the, like the calculation we did here. But here, they're both big numbers, right? So your impedance itself is large. So R01 parallel to R02 is the answer. I mean, is the gain of this circuit. Please remember, please, 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 please remember why it is not just RD and why it is R01 parallel to R02. Okay? Please. It's very important. Now, again, as we're really greedy about getting high gains, we're going to be looking at how we can increase R01 and R02. Right? So, just consider M1 here. It's, it's pretty intuitive, but I'm just going to do it once so that uh, it's out in the open. Uh, if we consider M1, right, what should I do to increase its resistance? We know that GM uh, is equal to 1 over R, right? The resistance of, uh, uh, that, that a uh, transistor can provide. So, but GM is proportional to W over L. And if you talk about the first transistor, W over L1, right? So obviously, R is going to be proportional to 1 over this. That is L over W, right? So if we increase the length of the transistor, we're going to have a greater resistance, right? But as we increase the length, we also have to increase the width. Why? Because just look here in this, it, uh, just this equation above this one. If you just increase length, you're gonna you're gonna decrease. You're gonna trash your transconductance, right? And that is not um, uh, advisable. So if you're increasing length to give yourself a better resistance, you also better scale up your uh, width, okay? And also, also the effect of increasing length is going to be visible in this VGS1 minus VTH1 right is proportional to 1 over W over L1 I'm I'm hoping that you're familiar with the current equation I equals uh, half mu n c ox W over L times VGS1 minus VTH, the whole squared. So if you see this, if everything else is constant, VGS1 minus VTH is proportional to 1 over root of W over L, okay? Please, uh, I'm, I'm just hoping that uh, you're familiar with all these things before we continue. So again here, as we scale up L1, right, uh, your Overdrive, this is the overdrive voltage, right? Overdrive voltage is going to increase. What happens if overdrive voltage increases? Just from our previous lecture, the one on uh, triode load, I think. So if you have this, VDD, it's like a building, right? You're going to have... Oops. So you're going to have... Um, the VDD distributed like floors. So here, and, and, and it is always advisable to free up this space as much as possible, right? There's a transistor here, there's a transistor here. So it's always advisable to free up some space because we need the output uh, voltage to have a good swing, right? Now here, if you increase the overdrive voltage of this transistor, right? If you increase it, you're going to kill the space available for your output swing. Same thing goes to M2 as well, right? If you increase the L, you're going to have a better resistance, yes. But then at the cost of what? You're going to decrease your output swing. Right? You're not going to have enough space for your output to swing. Right? So these are uh, some, some of the factors we need to consider when you're doing this um, design. Of course, places, applications where uh, you don't really need a good swing, you can, you can as well go ahead and increase the length. But why are we worrying about increasing the width when we increase the length? It's because at this output node, if you increase the width here, both of them, your a MOSFET is basically what a, a glorified capacitor, right? It's a huge capacitor. So if you keep on increasing W on both sides, you're going to have a large capacitance at this output node. 
what does that entail? What does a large capacitor entail? Any time in any circuit, the time constant is proportional to RC, right? Always you must have heard the RC time constant, RC time constant. So if you increase C, your time constant is going to increase, thereby making your device slower than it is supposed to be. Okay? I, I, I blurted out a lot of stuff here in this lecture, so uh, uh, if required, I'll make another one explaining, but it, it's just uh, nothing big. All, all I wanted to say here was that if you consider a common source amplifier structure with a saturated, I mean, uh, a, a transistor in saturation, your gain will be this. Okay, GM1 times R01 parallel to R02. And in that, if we want to still increase R01 and R02, you have to increase the length. If you increase the length, you're going to have to increase the width. If you increase the width, your GM will go down and your, I mean, if you don't increase the width, your GM will go down. And the same thing applies here, right? So both of them have to be scaled appropriately, I mean, uh, uh, proportionally. If you don't scale them proportionally, uh, you're going to have those troubles. But if you do scale them proportionally, your capacitance at the output node is going to increase, thereby making your device slow. So these are these are basically trade-offs, you know, when you design any circuit. And it's always good to know them. So I hope I didn't confuse you. If you if you feel confused, just uh, uh, go over the uh, the lecture again. And, and if you still don't, if you're not convinced, just leave a com comment that you'd like another lecture and I'll make another one. All right, great. Thank you so much for watching. See you later.